Hello, today I am going to use uh, our brother, Dr. Kent Hovind, um, very good man. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him, um, but I'm going to use his uh, one of his last studies here to show you why I believe that we are all already living in uh, the beginning of the first half of the seven years of tribulation. But let's listen to Kent. So it looks pretty simple. You got four beasts, four kings fighting over the world, trying to gain the world dominion, and the saints take over the world. Okay, I'm going to show some pictures like this because uh, the difference between me and Kent is that I think uh, Kent is looking at this as a uh, dominion of the world, and I'm looking at it as a dominion of the host of heaven, um, like more of like a spiritual dominion. Um, so these kings that arise out of the earth. Uh, we have to go look at the description we were given. And in these verses right here, we're given a description. Here's Kent. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. There it is again. We're going to be worn out. The beast is going to wear us out. He's going to persecute and terrorize the Christians and cause them to quit. And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of a time. Time is a year. Times would be two year and a dividing of a time. So a year, two years, and a half a year. Three and a half years. Huh. Verse 20, 26. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion and consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. We're going to get worn out, prevailed against, beat up, hurt, and many are going to quit in the middle of this. Okay, the point of this video is not to debate the beasts or anything like that or the shape of the earth or anything like that. But uh, what I want to do is I want you to try to empathize with those people that are living on this earth that are similar to me and have uh, the last few years or a couple years or however long have literally become unable to see the joke of a world that we used to live in. From That's from our point of view. From your point of view, it's quite a crazy thing I understand that um, that is because this is supernatural but um, this video will, will hopefully uh, be able to give you a better idea on that but what I want you to do is uh, empathize with the with the flat earther and think of the, the family things that uh, they've gone through think of uh, friendships, marriages, um, you know, parent-child uh, relationships, damage, and just consider all that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash a little uh, FE on the screen when I want you to remember to empathize, okay? Here's Kent again. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8 says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. And he shall, be, he shall be diverse from, the, one of them shall arise and be diverse from the first and shall subdue three kings. Okay, we need to do a little history here. This is the first version of the dragon capsule. Um, this is the one that has ten horns. Uh, it went up to the space station ten times. Uh, just like that right there. Um, when Elon Musk came out and announced this, which is... The passenger or the crew version of the dragon and uh, there it is with the dragon trunk on it and here it is uh, subduing three kings 
um, which are Falcon Nines. If we go to Daniel 7-7, seven, seven, um, it had great iron teeth. So, uh, and oh, and the he goat uh, in Daniel 8, the he goat is right here. Um, so uh, this all fits together very well, but uh, this one's diverse from the first. So uh, this right here that we're looking at, this is our fourth king. We'll get into that later. I think Hoven theory: ten Muslim nations that surround Israel are going to uh, have make a treaty to uh, you know, fight with Israel. Somebody, some leader of one of those countries is going to rise up and subdue three of the countries. So they kind of join together and he's now king of three countries together. Maybe Lebanon will join with Syria or I don't know how it's going to work out. But three countries are going to get together and this guy who rules those little three countries is going to actually be the Antichrist. A quick point I want to make is that I think this is where the only place where uh, people are getting lost here. Um, Daniel 7, 7. Uh, Daniel's describing a beast. The, is, the fourth beast is a beast. It's not a king as, as far as human goes. So it's a beast that is a king that rises out of the earth. And he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. Hoven theory, I think this is Antichrist coming on the scene here. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. They shall be given into his hand, until a time and times and the dividing of the time, but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy it unto the end. If we step back, we can see the kingdom being taken. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. So again, that's the third time we are given the kingdom, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. So when you line up these passages, you see there's four beasts and the saints take the kingdom. There's four beasts, they get worn out and the saints take the kingdom. There's four beasts, they get prevailed against and beat up and worn out and the saints take the kingdom. So between here and here, we're going to go through some tribulation time. Jesus, asked, Jesus' disciples asked him in Matthew 24 and in Mark 13 and in Luke 21, all three passages lined up here, Lord, when are you coming and what's the sign we should watch for? So he tells them, he answers their question. In Matthew, it takes up 23 verses. And in the middle of this 23 verse passage, there's a green box here where the abomination of desolation is set up. That comes in the middle of the tribulation. So the first half of this is the first three and a half years. The second half down here is the last three and a half years. Same thing in uh, Mark, only it takes up 19 verses. But in the middle is the abomination of desolation. You can look at the chart. Same thing in Luke, it only takes up 17 verses. At the end of each one, it says after the tribulation, he comes back, you know, angel blows a trumpet and catches up the saints, the rapture. So let's look at this uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke passage we looked at the other night about how he's coming back after the tribulation, the general overview. In this Matthew passage, it says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. What's the first thing we ought to do? Be alert that we don't get deceived. Jesus is telling his disciples what's going to happen in this first three and a half years. You and I are going to face this starting pretty soon. You're going to see many people that you thought were good, godly you know, Christians be deceived. And the love of many shall wax cold. Many people on fire for God are going to just get cold. But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. The, uh, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I just want to emphasize. Uh, that verse again that he just read Matthew 24 14 and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come so um, I think that applies to uh, today in our world so 
That's just me, my beliefs. But whosoever shall be given, whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. And now the brother shall betray the brother to death. This is something I've noticed in Revelation. Uh, death. Um, those that die for the word of God or uh, give their lives for the word of God. It's seeming to me that we are not talking about physical death. We're talking about dying to the world. So that's my take for the rest of the video on it. Uh, maybe I'll explain it a little bit. What would cause that to happen? This must be intense tribulation time. People under great stress betray their own brother. And the father, the son, and children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Folks, we're going to be here for this. If your family rose up against you and tried to get you put to death, how would that affect you? It affects us in a very huge way. Ask any flat earther. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That is the first half of the Mark passage before the abomination of desolation. Christians have got to look at it this way. We're going to go through, this is the hard time coming. But see, we are on the field. You need to see it the way the spectators see it. The people up in heaven, there's a great cloud of witnesses watching us, Hebrews chapter 12. I have to say thank you to Dr. Ken Hogan. I've learned a lot from this man. He's awesome. They're all watching, and when you fall down, the people up in heaven, Moses, Elijah, Adam, Eve, they're not saying, oh, you loser. They're saying, come on, get up, keep running. Keep running, go, 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 don't quit, don't quit. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. Your own friends are gonna turn you in. This is coming. This is a time of great tribulation. And some of you, they shall cause to be put to death. Jesus is answering their question. Lord, when are you coming and what should we look for? Okay, guys, here's what's coming. <laughs> and when he'd opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So many people have been killed, they're up there in front of God saying, God, when are you gonna step in and stop this? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. What did he just say? He said, you guys just rest. There's still more Christians gonna be killed. Okay, uh, 2 Ezra chapter 13, verse five. Uh, we're talking another vision uh, that Ezra was given. After this, I looked and saw that an innumerable multitude of people were gathered together from the four winds of heaven to make war against the man who came up out of the sea. And I looked and saw that he carved out for himself a great mountain and flew up onto it. And I tried to see the region or the place which the mountain was carved, but I could not. After this I looked and saw that all who had gathered together against him to wage war with him were filled with fear, yet they dared to fight. When he saw the onrush of the approaching multitude, he neither lifted his hand nor held a spear of, or, we, or any weapon of war, but I only saw how he sent forth from his mouth something like a stream of fire, and from his lips a, fl a flaming breath, and from his tongue he shot forth a storm of sparks. And basically he wipes them out, and we find out that this is just, um, this is Jesus. Uh, and I believe it's right now. But, uh, yeah, we're, from our point of view, things probably look much different than from, you know, the, the opposite point of view. Uh, I see this 
as you have just a few people um, that are that are using their testimony uh, and standing for the Word of God um, and in particular biblical cosmology seems to be uh, where people can change the scripture in their in their you know intake and they they give it excuses in a, in a way but so this uh, this it seems to me that everybody's gathered against the flat earth truth and it seems to me that the flat earth truth came from the spirit of truth and it seems to me that Jesus is here gathering us um, right now right now so I think that's why flat earth came here I think it's to gather uh, to gather uh, the body of Christ and I know a lot of people that aren't flat earthers don't like hearing that but um, what does your Bible say about what the world we live in you have something in your mind that you shouldn't have in your mind and it's at the very very core of your being it's what you believe you believe that you're on a spinning ball well from my point of view you're just believing a lie and where's the source of that lie Satan and uh, what, what does the Bible say about what Satan's gonna do at the end especially he's gonna lie and right now the world is believing it period there's only flat earthers that aren't believing it. So, something to think about. We got filled with the Spirit, and our eyes started seeing differently. It's not only that. <laughs> The other part is that it is the truth that this huge deception has been carried out and successful. That's a scary thing. Especially when we can go, you know, measure 20 miles and we can do, all, you know, prove it easily thousands of ways but it can't be acknowledged that's the thing it can't be acknowledged so uh, and and in the end all this is written all this is written and in the end uh, it won't be acknowledged until something catastrophic happens enough where we can see up into God's or see up to God's throne and when you look up and you see God's throne I think that's enough to tell you that you've been deceived and that's what's coming for the world and in one hour you've got to realize what the flat earthers have <clears throat> have uncovered and are trying to share they're not dumb. We're not dumb people. Um, we're very smart people. And we're not saying we're smarter. It's not a competition. It's not a debate. The, the debate doesn't ever get debated. It can't. Because there's a lie and there's the truth. And, and anything that you test or experiment is going to tell you the truth. If you use your senses, you can't use other people's fake data. Can't go to NASA for it. But anyhow, thank you to Dr. Kent Hovind. He's an awesome ambassador of God. And he has been through some stuff. And, uh, and he keeps trucking. I love that guy. So thank you.
Mr. Holden. And thank you to Jesus Christ.